Hey, hey, I'm so glad that you joined me today for my Tuesday tips. Um, I just got back from vacation and um, I'm so excited to be home. I don't know about you all, but it's good to be home. <laughs> but I created this really cute tutorial for you all about um, how to make a terracotta spring planter. So if you're watching this on the replay, then welcome. Um, but I love spring cookies. I love florals. Um, a lot of people have asked me recently to do some tutorials on flowers. So I thought this was an easy way to start. Um, uh, the terracotta planner um, is something that looks kind of impressive, I think, but is super, super easy. So we will go ahead and get started. Um, this is a video that I've already recorded, so I'm going to pop it up on the screen and I'm going to talk through how I created it. If you all have any questions, be sure and put them in the comments. So this is the planter. Let me stop it just for a second so I can tell you all. I have a special deal going on this week <clears throat> that if you spend $25 in my shop, Cheerful Cutters, you get this planter cookie cutter for free. So it's about four inches by three inches. And um, it, it, um, you can find it under spring terracotta planter. <laughs> it's 550. Once you add that to your cart, along with 25 um, additional dollars in cookie cutters. So your, let's see if I can do math, your total would be 3050. When you go to check off, it will automatically take off $5.50, which is the cost of the planter. So um, that's going on this week. And let's go ahead and start. So the color that I'm using for this before I get started, I love to use the sugar art colors. And um, I do have a coupon code for the sugar art where you save, I think it's 15% and it's just cheerful baker, but I love the sugar art. They're great colors. I really like the owners of the company. So I like supporting them, but it's powdered color and it's easy to use. You don't have to use a ton of it to achieve the colors that you want. So the color that I'm starting with is pumpkin. Um, honestly, I don't remember if I added anything to the pumpkin because like I said, I did this a couple weeks ago in anticipation that when I got home from vacation today, I would be tired, <laughs> but I still wanted to give you all something. So I believe it's just plain pumpkin, but the way you can make a good terracotta is if your pumpkin isn't quite dark enough you can add just a little bit of red and a little bit of brown. But I believe this is just straight pumpkin. So first I am gonna take um, piping icing and flooding icing. And whenever you're decorating cookies, if you, you wanna think about what's in the foreground and what's in the background. Um, I would love for you all to tell me what you're up to today or tell me, oh, tell me if you watch Cookie-a-thon because that was this past weekend. I couldn't go live because I was in Florida at a hotel with a thousand other people and I guess the um, it was just overloaded. So that was kind of a bummer that I couldn't go live. But so anyway, I'm using piping icing to go around the bottom of my planter. What are you eating? Hold on. I have, um, I have a puppy. Did you all know that? <laughs> and, and he eats, you know, anything in sight. But anyway, I go around the edge of my cookie and then I'm going to fill it in with flooding icing. And oh, good, Bendy. I'm so glad that you liked the cookie-a-thon. Um, but I'm going to go around the edge of my cookie with my flood with my piping and then I'm going to fill it in with the flooding icing and you'll notice I always do a really good thick flood because um that way it looks smooth if you don't make your flood thick enough it's not going to be as smooth as you want it to be so first I do that Next, I'm not going to fill in that top part of my planter because I want the cookie, the icing to dry a little bit um, because I want there to be a differentiation between 
those sections. And that happens through dry time. So I'm just using white piping icing and I'm going around the edge. Then I'm going to fill it in with white flood. Now you definitely would not have to do this. Um, you could just do your flowers right on top of your cookie. Uh, but I like the way it looks if you have a base of white. But again, you wouldn't have to do this. Um, Cookie-a-thon was amazing. I'm so glad that you learned a lot with Cookie-a-thon. Where can you buy this cutter? Oh, you can get this cutter at CheerfulCutters.com. That's my cookie cutter shop. And I have a deal going on right now for the week. If you spend $25 in cookie cutters, um, or there's cookie cutters, there's there's other things besides cookie cutters. There's, um, what is there on there? <laughs> Did I tell you all I got back last late last night from Florida? Anything on my site, um, if you spend 20, at least $25 and you add this cookie cutter, which is the spring terracotta cookie cutter, I think I can show you at the end of this. Um, add that, it's $5.50. Then when you check out, as long as you've added 25 additional dollars in items from my shop, this the $5.50 will come off and you'll get this for free. Um, okay, so now I've done the white and I'm going to go back and I'm going to fill in the top of my planter box with that same really pretty um, pumpkin flood. And because I allowed the bottom to dry a little bit, do you see how you can see a difference between those sections? Now I got a little bit of my pumpkin into my white, but it's okay because I just use my little scraper. If you miss this from the beginning, you can, um, this will be saved on my page and re you can rewatch it. Angie, you're still in Vegas? Yes, I had a great time. I took, my husband and I took our youngest son and his friend to Orlando to Universal Studios for four days. And it was fun and exhausting. <laughs> but we did have a great time. Now, I let this cookie dry overnight. You want it to be really dry. Next, I'm taking green, and I sped this up. Otherwise, it's just you all would have not wanted to watch. It was so slow. What I'm doing is I'm taking piping icing, and I'm squeezing it on. And then you could use a knife or a scraper, but I'm just using the end of this little cute scraper. Now, if you're going to Cookie Con, I'll be giving these away, so make sure you find me. But again, you need to make sure that your pumpkin is really good and dry. Now this looks like the moss. So once I do one layer, I'm just going to go over and I'm going to do it again. And I'm just scraping it, um, leaving a really thin layer. And again, I'm using piping icing. Next, because terracotta plants are kind of um, chippy, I'm going back over with my pumpkin. And again, always use piping icing. And I'm just spreading it on, but I'm leaving it a little bit rough because that makes it look more like a terracotta planter. This is such an easy, easy technique, but it looks really cool. Next, I'm using tip number 233. It's a Wilton tip. It's got all these little holes at the end. Then I'm going to use Wilton tip 101. And when I use the tip, I make sure that the big end is, I can't show you that, it's too small. The big end is down, and I'm going to show it closer up here in a second. So it's at a 45 degree angle. The big end is down towards the cookie. The small end is up. And all I'm doing, see, I'm squeezing, squeezing, and then I barely move my tip up, and then I take it back down. It's a real easy way to do a petal. You want to make sure that you have thick consistency icing when you do this. Basically, you want it to be right out of the mixer. If it's thin, your petal will just flop over. So <laughs> there, I do it really slowly. And again, the key is to have the large part of the tip. Again, it is tip number 101 from Wilton. 
And that's what I like to use for the flowers. For larger flowers, I'll also use tip number 104. It's the same tip. One just has a little bit of a larger opening. Um, yeah, Universal is big and it has a lot of, you, it, you do need to take a lot of time. So we were there for four days. So that was great. Now I'm going back over with my tip number 233 and I'm just squeezing to make the center of the flower. Now here I'm using the exact same tip, the exact same motion where I squeeze and I move my hand up and down, but I'm just layering these. Um, I don't know what kind of flower this is. Maybe it's imaginary, but I think it looks pretty darn cute. <laughs> um, this icing color is, again, it's the Sugar Art, and it is hot pink. And you always want to use Master Elites when you are using um, the Sugar Art to color icing. This is my favorite color. I could use it for every single cookie set. <laughs> It's nice, too, because you can make, you know, bright colors or light colors, depending on how, on how much you add. So here I'm just showing you another close up. The big end of the tip is down and the small end is up and I'm starting at the bottom. I'm squeezing and barely moving my hand. Now, when I get to here, I stop squeezing and pull away. If you have this one tip, again, the smaller one is tip 101, a little bit larger is 104. You can make, you can make so many different um, floral cookies just with this one, with this one petal tip. So I'm just going down. Again, I started at the top because I wanted to layer. Next, I'm going to make the flower on the right the exact same way that I made the other flower. You could hand paint flowers on top. If you're uncomfortable making flowers, you can buy pre-made flowers at Michael's and probably Hobby Lobby, and you could just put them right on there. Um, you don't have to make the flowers if you don't want to. I think you could also put um, carrots at the top of this. You could make royal icing transfer carrots and put that. You could do all kinds of things with a planter. But doesn't that terracotta planter look like a terracotta planter? So I'm going to finish doing this. Next, you will see I'm going to put moss on the cookie. Um, and the way that I do that is I just take cookies that I've already made and I'm going to put them in my mini food processor along with some elite color. I think I use leaf green and I'm going to puree them up in my food processor and you'll see I use it here in just a second. So I'm going to take some of that green. It's thicker icing because I need to have something for my moss to stick to. And there it is. So that's just ground up cookies in the mini food processor along with the elite color. And I'm just taking it and I'm going to put it on that green icing and that way it'll stick. This moss is really cute too to use in um, Easter basket cookies. I love it. It's so easy to make. And then you can store the excess in an airtight container, put it in the refrigerator. Isn't that cute? It just adds, I think it's always good when you can add some texture to cookies. And then I'm going to use my little scraper. Again, I'm going to have these at CookieCon, so make sure that you find me because it is the greatest tool ever. And I'm just going to wipe that off. And I'm just using my scribe to stick it a little bit more to the icing so it doesn't all come off if I want to package this cookie. I think this would be super cute to put a name on the bottom too, wouldn't it? Personalize it. 
Now I've taken my green thicker icing and I'm not using a tip, but um, I used a tipless bag and cut it at an angle and I used it. Hold on. Let me pause this a second. I used that tipless or the tipless bag. I cut it at a little angle and I used that to make the leaves on the cookie. And um, do you all see the leaves that are on there? Now what I'm getting ready to do is I'm going to take um, the sugar art. Let me see if I can rewind it just a minute because we missed that. Um, I'm going to take the sugar art elite color. I just want to paint a little bit on the flowers. Um, here's where I'm making the leaves. But for some reason, you know, of course, I didn't record that part. <laughs> that always happens, doesn't it? So this is elite color, hot pink. You always want to paint, do hand painting with elite color. And here I'm using color solution. Now I like to just put the color solution and the elite color in the top of the, um, the little container. And I'm going to put enough in there so that it's almost the consistency of nail polish. You can kind of play around with it till you get the consistency that you like. And then I'm going to mix it together. I'm making edible paint. Um, this doesn't work too well if you use Master Elites. Master Elites are mainly for coloring icing. You really want to use Elite Color when you're painting. And I'm going to take this teeny tiny little brush that I got from Chua Cookies. And I'm going to paint some centers onto my flower just to make it a little bit darker. Again, it adds a little extra definition. You don't have to do this step, but um, I think all those little extra details, they really do make a difference. Chua Cookie, I don't know her website. It's just, just put in Chua Cookies she has the best brushes. I mean, that's all I use. I can't show them to you because I'm upstairs and they're all downstairs. But she has, the, and they're like $5. They are not expensive at all. You can get the sugar art from, I think it's the sugarart.com. And you can use code cheerfulbaker to save 15%. Um, that's all I use is the sugar art. I just like it. Now, one hint when you are coloring icing with the sugar art, <clears throat> you can look on my Instagram and I, I think I have a video on there recently of making icing, but basically you're going to take your icing and you're going to add a little bit of color to it. Just a little bit of that dry powder color. Then I like to take a dropper bottle. Yes. you. Oh, let me tell you, you take a dropper bottle and you put a little bit of water and then that'll help dissolve, kind of dissolve that um, powder. And then you mix it up. And then I let my icing sit for about 10 to 15 minutes and mix it up again. And that way the ice, the color gets really mixed throughout. Yes, you could absolutely do this with Tweets pens, without a doubt. I love Tweets pens. I just found out, I saw yesterday where they came out with all kinds of different colors. And that was very exciting. Um, if you all don't know what Tweets pins are, it's Tweets Cookie Connection. They have absolutely the best edible markers, I think, in the marketplace. They're absolutely fantastic. They have one that's a teeny tiny little tip that I, that I use all the time. So there's our little cookie. It's all done. What do you all think? You like it? Um, so again, you can go to cheerfulcutters.com here. We'll go there right now so I can show you all. Let me, um, pull it up here real quick. And then I can show you exactly where the cookie cutter is. Um, let's see. Um, Tara. Tata. Of course, I'm, you know, trying to figure out how to spell it. <laughs> ah, let me find it. I can't find it. Hold on just a second, you all. I know it's on here because I put it on here this morning. 
Here it is. Okay. Let me go back to you all. And here we go. Now I will find. Um, here it is. Okay, so this is my cookie cutter shop. It's called Cheerful Cutters. And what you want to look for is the spring planter box filled with flowers cookie cutter. It's right here. It's $5.50. But like I said, if you um, add $25 worth of anything on my site into your cart and then add this planter box in there, um, it'll, it's going to add the 550, but as long as you've ordered $25 worth of merchandise, you, it'll take that off at the end and you'll get it for free. And that runs through this weekend. But right here, I have my cheerful box decorating subscription, which is super fun. It's a cookie class in a box that comes with all the cookie cutters. Um, I have the box and the digital box. You can read all about it. Right now, we're on a wait list. So you can um, click here to subscribe. And then it'll say the cheerful box is currently full. And you'll be able to join the wait list. But we have that. We have, um, oh, this is exciting. Let me go back. I have my Royal Icing 101 class. I'm not sure if you all can see that. If it does the pop-ups, it doesn't. But anyway, you can go to Royal Icing 101 and let me see if I can get, let me see if I can show you all that too. Um, I make my own meringue powder and I've done that for a couple of years because it's a lot cheaper and I wanted to be able to, here we go. I wanted to be able to make a product that tasted really good. And I did not love um, the flavor of store-bought meringue powders. So I created my own recipe. So right now for $7, you can get the meringue powder, my royal icing recipe, and my royal icing 101 class. So let me show you that. Um, it's right here. And this is me on the Food Network Christmas Cookie Challenge. It is, the reason I put this on here is they told me no one had ever made homemade meringue powder um, on the Food Network. And I thought that was pretty cool. So <laughs> I did that. And the judges liked the way the cookies tasted. So, but um, it's step-by-step -step and bonus recipes. It's only $7. So you can click on there. This is a video that kind of shows you, you know, the way that the meringue powder or the way that the royal icing looks. It's good and puffy and delicious. Then here are just some cookies that I made using the recipe. But my goal when I started making cookies is I wanted to do something that I wanted to make something that was delicious. And um, for me, that was having good icing because have you all ever had cookies and the icing is rock hard? I didn't want that. I wanted something that was good. So my icing dries firm so you can stack the cookies. But when you bite into it, it, it is really, really good. It is. You had your first class last night with the box. That's awesome, Jane. Um, yes, I encourage people who are Cheerful Box subscribers to use my box to do classes. Some people are like, I don't want you teaching my techniques. I want you teaching my techniques. I'm cool with that. Have classes. Make some extra money. Have fun. Spread the joy of cookies. Um, let's see. Anything else? Any other questions about the Royal Icing class, the Cheerful Box, or the cookie? Anybody? You all want to see my puppy? Oh, come here, baby. Come here, Winston. You all want to see him? I'm going to go get him. Hold on. He's so cute. Come here. He, he found a roll of, he found a roll of paper, a roll of a uh, tissue paper or not tissue paper, but <laughs> look how cute he is. Oh my gosh. Is he the cutest thing you've ever seen? I just love him. Our neighbor down the street got him and their um, dog was old and, and he didn't like him because he's a puppy. 
but he's a standard poodle. So they called and they said, would you like to have a puppy? And I said, yes. He's so sweet. <laughs> okay, you can get down. So that's your little bit of love for today. He's precious. His name's Winston. He is big. He's He's not as big as he looks when we with me holding him. He's he's four months old. He probably weighs, I don't know, 15 pounds. He's he's gonna be big, but he's adorable. So let's see. How long does the royal icing stay softer, stay soft than the typical royal icing? Well, you know, I really don't know the answer to that question, quite honestly, because here's how I do cookies. I make them so I for the week, if I have a cookie order, here's what I do. The first day, well, first of all, I make all of my cookie dough once a month. I make a whole bunch of cookie co cookie dough and I stick it in the freezer. Then I take it out. The first day, I usually bake all the cookies. The second day, I make the icing. The third day, I will um, do the first part of the decorating. The fourth day, I will do the second part of the decorating. The fifth day, I will bag the cookies up. I heat seal all, my, all of my cookies and I give them to the customer <clears throat> within one day of their event. Um, they may, I, I'm not sure because that's the way that I've always done it. I want to give people really fresh stuff. But um, I think as long as they're heat sealed, they're not going to get really, really hard. I mean, I don't know that for sure because I've never kept them that long. <laughs> I like to give people fresh stuff. Um, if I was doing an event and I was making a bunch of cookies, what I would do is I would do this exact same thing, but the day that I um, heat seal them, I would put them in the freezer. That way, you know, you never have more than five days of um cookie you never have more than five days where your cookies are sitting out before the customer's getting them with me it's usually no more than three days uh any other questions i have a lot of laundry to do because you know i just got back from vacation so um if you want to learn more about cookie decorating please check out the cheerful box. I'm really proud of that. I tried, uh, I started that because when I started to decorate cookies, I spent so much time and money trying to figure out cookie cutter sets that went together. And so I have taken all of that work and you don't have to do it. You just get a cookie cutter set in a box um, it's a surprise, but I have a sneak peek, so you can see it if you really want to. Um, but I think it's fun to get a surprise, but you get six large cookie cutters, three mini cookie cutters, a stencil, clip art, and then the step-by-step -step class on how to do all of the cookies in the box. Um, thank you for saying that you love the cheerful box. I'm very proud of the cheerful box. Um, that's it for today. I think I've got to go unpack and, you know, do all my laundry and clean up the mess that my puppy made while I was on this call <laughs> with the paper all over the floor. Don't you just love puppies? I love puppies. If you're watching on the replay and you have a question, feel free to ask it. If you are a cheerful box subscriber, um, I'm going to go live tonight in the group to answer any questions that you all have. And um, the boxes are shipping out today or tomorrow. They're a few days later than they normally would be because I felt like I needed to take my child on a vacation, right? <laughs> Sometimes you have to do that. So thank you all for watching and I hope you have a cheerful day. Oh, I'll put the link to the cookie cutter too in the comments. So that way you all can find it real easily. Take care. Bye.